Hey, what's going on guys? 018 Seth Shadow here. Hope you guys had a great holiday weekend. I know in my case, I got to spend it with family this time around. It's been at least two years since we got together because the pandemic kept us apart for a while. But it was a good time. Present exchange, we played some games too, and just overall, it was great to see them after so long. But with that said and done, I'm back, and we've got a lot of items to cover from over the holiday weekend. There have been a lot of big changes in card value. Everything has been... Basically, everything has been rising overall, so there is a lot to catch up on here. But before we start getting into the singles, I have one topic to cover in regards to staples. So in one of my prior videos, I was talking about critical and heal trigger common vanillas that you can pick up from set 1 and set 6. Today, I want to go over the same topic for sentinels, or as we tend to call them in per Vanguard, perfect guards. So sentinels in D format all share the same effect. You play them on the guardian circle, and then if you have two or more cards in your hand, you have to discard one card. Then your vanguard or the unit that this is protecting can't be hit until the end of battle. So basically, if you play this and you only have one card in your hand, you don't have to discard a card. The thing about sentinels, again, in D format is all of them share this effect. All of them. There are five sentinels each for each nation. And if you take a look at market prices, these are all from set one. We're looking at about $3, $2 per copy, with Planar Prevent being the cheapest and its lowest listing is a dollar. Twin Buckler is the most expensive in terms of listings, and Violate Dragon has the highest market price. But take a look at set 6 on the other hand. Market prices for these, these are the five Sentinels, are a dollar or under for these three. And then when it comes to Zeal Dragon, it's just about a dollar for market price. And the only one that is really going up in value is Planet Wall Dragon for Brantgate, which is now $2.29 market price overall with 10 listings. But ultimately, if you're looking for thrift in terms of your perfect guards, it's going to be the same with the triggers. You'll want to look at set 6 as opposed to set 1. But when it comes to Lyrical Melody, it's the opposite. So with Lyrical Melody, it's sets 1 and sets 3 that have perfect guards in them. There are 5 perfect guards that you can choose from for set 1, and all their market prices are almost 50 to 60 cents overall. All of them have the same effect, they just have different names and different artworks. And the same goes... For the one perfect guard you can pick up from set 3 of the Lyrical Monasterio series. The difference here is this one's market price is significantly higher at 131 and it doesn't have any listings under the $1 mark right now. So if you're looking for cheaper perfect guards to pick up for Lyrical Monasterio, you'll definitely want to take a look at set 1 and avoid set 3 for the time being. And with that done, let's go ahead and start looking at the singles. And the first thing to talk about are singles for Eva. So I covered this last time, and I think I'm just going to make this a major point here. Result of the experiment henceforth just keeps on, just keeps on going up. It was about to drop below $25, but... It crept up the last time I covered it to over 30, and now we've only got seven listings between both of its copies, and they're both above $45 right now. So, if you were looking to pick this up, you're just going to have to hope that this last month of promo packs will put enough back out onto the market for it to drop, but after January, that's it. This card isn't slated for any reprints that I'm aware of, so as long as Eva continues to remain popular, 
I don't think this card is going to drop off until Bushiroad actually gives us a reprint of it. The same goes for Experiment Successful. This card has hit the $15 mark back in November one time, and it's now on its way back there with only one listing below $15. Whether or not it'll actually sell, I'd say the chances are pretty high this time, because not only can this be played in EVA, it can be played in the new Monster Ride line that's going to be used in set 8. And that is overall a pretty popular one, given that the lore for it is that the new ride line is basically Eva's sister. I myself am pretty intrigued with it, and it does look like a pretty cool archetype to play. I tend, I'm definitely looking forward to playing it myself, and I would say the same for a lot of other players, which is part of the reason why this thing is going up. Dragonic Overlord The End. The baseline SP of this from set 5 has been bought out. There were a number of $30 listings that sold over the holiday weekend, and then we finally sold at the $50 mark. There are only two listings left for this at $52 and $53. But before you rush to buy this, if you're planning on that, let me just point out, there's also the next highest rarity, which is the 10th rare SP. This card currently has three listings at $70. After that, it will go back up to $90 for this one. And as far as I can tell, this rarity is substantially more difficult to pick up than the regular SP. So if you're willing to shell out the extra almost $20, you'd be better off picking this guy up instead. But if you can't, and you're just looking for more of thrift on the SP lineup, maybe more listings will go up for that one, but we'll have to see. Next, I want to talk about the Nirvana support, Overdress and Cross Overdress. And the first thing to go over is Nirvana Jiva, which has been seeing an increase in price. This card was around $12 from its initial release and has been going for about $15 pretty consistently, but it had its points where it got to $18 and now it's back up to that point with only four listings left. Now, set 9 has, or I think it was set 10, I think it was set 10. Set 10 confirmed that we are going to be getting some more crossover dress support, so expect Jiva to continue to see playability over the course of the game, but in the English format, and I think even in the Japanese format, this deck is still not as popular to play as the original Nirvana line, so it is a little interesting to see this creep up so much when the original Mahir is not going up nearly as much. But a card that is going up, rightfully so, I'm going to tell you now, is Virena Arcs. This card is a generic staple when it comes to overdress, because this is pretty playable in cross overdress too. Remember, the concept of overdress, which this card follows, is that you just have to place it on top of Trickstar and it gets its effect. In this case, Virena Arcs is a draw engine. You play it on top of Trickstar, then it lets you draw two and it gets power 5k for the turn. Which is great for the regular overdress mechanic, but it's also very playable in cross overdress too, for a few reasons. It can be great for an early game rush, and on top of that, it's an easy discard for Jiva's skill. And if you need to draw mid-game as well, it's not a bad it's not a bad hit, as it will give you a 15k body that will be able to go after Vanguard in every case. The double rare has gone up in value to about 7, and the SP is currently about 8. So if you have the extra money to shell out, you might want to consider picking up the SP of Irina Arcs. If you've been following my prior market watches, you know stuff like Rancor Chain and the other ride lines have been seeing drastic increases in their SPs, and Arcs is overall a nice staple to have for Overdress, 
So having a few SPs in your pocket is not bad. Continuing on set six trends, though, we've got Performing Pedal Diantha, who has breached the $15 mark. There are now a few listings available at $17 and higher, and it has sold for that price point, but most of them have been selling for $15 over the holiday weekend. To reiterate, this card is generic. The only thing about it is that you do have to be grade 3 for all of its effects to take place, but it's basically a counterblast version of the Condensation Order, which revives something from the drop zone. But you can play this in Flagberg, you can play this in Leonorn, which is what it's mostly meant for, and even Magnolia Elder can play this. And I should mention that Bushiroad will be announcing a banlist update for the English format at the end of this month, so part of this buyout may be attributed to that, where Magnolia Elder will see more play if Inlet Pulse's restriction with Magnolia Elder comes off. And then, of course, you've got Julian who has now been bought out to the $15 mark and only has one listing at $25 right now. I anticipate there will be more listings coming up soon, maybe against $15, but yeah, Julian is up there now. And I should mention that if you are planning to buy into any of these cards for set 6, if you can wait until after March... There is still the reprint slated for March, which means you could see these cards all fall out in value. But if you need it before March for either Worlds or for early BSF tournaments, I'm afraid you're out of luck. You're just going to have to hope that prices begin to drop as we creep closer to the reprint. Then I want to take a look at Lyrical Monasterio Set 3. In particular, I want to cover some boss cards that are not looking are not getting as many looks starting with Mediel. This card is currently available for about three dollars each and the vast majority of its support cards are also two to three dollars to pick up. This card doesn't rely on too many cards from prior Lyrical Monasterio sets so it's one of the cheaper builds that you can build out of this overall nation. So, if you're looking for something cheaper to build, Mediel is definitely a good option to take a look at. And another one that's getting some bump later from Bushiroad is Hasarit. So Hasarit and Mediel are getting a new promo card, which I feel like benefits Hasarit a little bit more. But Hasarit is still a little cheaper to pick up than Mediel right now, with its copies being about $1.50 and most of its other support cards also falling around the same mark. And then you've also got Michu, who is supposed to be getting a new promo for our play in set 8's promo cards, I think. But ultimately, Michu is actually down in value. And even though it's more expensive than Mediel and Hasaret right now, it's about $8 for its triple R. And the rest of its support cards have also been seeing a fallout in value. So if you wanted to play into Mediel, it's, it might still go down a bit further, but there is the potential for it to go up with the new promo that's coming. And then Make a Trend Kyoka is actually one of the cheaper ones that you can pick up for all of its new support cards. Because most of them are a dollar or lower, with Kyoka herself only being slightly higher. In terms of prior support that you'd want to play with this deck, I think the only expensive one besides the draw trigger, of course, would be Melty. But you could still play this card without Melty, which makes almost all of these decks, aside from Michu, pretty solid $60, $60 decks, maybe, if you wanted to try and pick up the whole thing. But to wrap up set three, there is the one there is the one staple for meta decks, Cooling Heart Yuika, which has seen a rebound in price from its low of about $25, and it's back to $30. So, if you need to pick this up for Worlds, $30 is probably not a bad price point. And if you're looking for BSF, Lyrical sets are not looking at reprints, so 
you might want to pick this up as it might continue to rise back up to $40, like another card we are about to cover right now. Tempest is the last card we're going to cover in today's Market Watch, and boy, it's a doozy. It's surpassed $40. Listings have been going for $44, with the last few listings over the holiday season selling for over $45, and we're left with four listings above $45, and once these are gone, $50. It's rare for a triple R in the entirety of Cardfight Vanguard to ever hit $50. And the last one to do that was probably Brainwash Swirler. Technically, you've also got Inlet Pulse, but Inlet Pulse has fallen back out to about 30. Tempest, on the other hand, the Youthburg Ride Line is incredibly popular and incredibly competitive. This is a favorite to win Worlds, or at least it'll see a lot of play at Worlds, so it's no surprise that its value has increased, and for team tournaments, this thing is also going to be very popular to play. But for it to cross $45 is pretty bad, and I can only hope it'll at least drop back down to 40 but if you're looking to pick this up in the short term, you are out of luck. I would say wait until the end of Worlds, as hype might die down a little bit. But if this actually crosses $50, it's going to set a pretty bad precedent for the entire Youthburg line when it comes to trying to build that deck. It'll just be too unaffordable as time goes along. So we'll have to see what kind of solution Bushiroad comes up with, but hopefully the secondary market will calm down on this. Until then... You're looking at a $50 card in an already expensive deck. But that's it for today's Market Watch. Thank you guys for watching and keeping up. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any requests for items to cover, please let me know, and I will look to cover them on my next Market Watch. See you guys later, and have a great day.